Hello and welcome to Gaming Valkyries, the show by girls, for girls, and or girls supporters. Tonight is our first episode for Gaming Valkyries, so I guess a round of applause for us, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> we are so happy to be here. Uh, myself, Nars, um, Nars Gaming, you can check it out as well. And I'm here today with... Ali Mew from Ali Mew Gaming. And Crystal from Kitty on a Leash on YouTube. <laughs> and we're here to start this uh, female gaming podcast because we feel that there isn't one out there. So by all means, if anyone enjoys it, you know, let us know. Um, we're just going to go around really quickly before we get started and kind of introduce ourselves. You know, give us a bit of credibility. You guys don't think we're you know, trash talk. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Um, I'm Nar, and I actually am CEO and founder of Girl Game Revo, GGL.com. I'm also lead video game columnist at Nuku Bakker Ledger, uh, organizer for the Employees Team for a Female Gamers Meetup, and obviously one of your hosts for tonight. Take it away, Ali. Hi, I'm Ali, or Ali Mew, and I have a YouTube channel called uh, Ali Mew Gaming. Uh, I do a lot of Let's Plays, tutorials, teaching other people how to actually record games like I do. And I think I make meaningful commentaries that actually have to do with real life. I started doing those things talking about, you know, issues about people feeling fat or even myself or the way I feel like I am treated in the gaming world as a girl gamer. And I'm also sponsored by Elgato Gaming Capture Card <laughs> because I used their product so much and I made so much tutorials. And that's pretty much it. I'm just making a really good way of showing how girl gamers don't have to be slutty, that stereotype that, you know, we're either slutty or we can't play games. And I just hope I'm a really good role model to girls or guy gamers. Final Crystal? Echo. Elite. Great. Hi, guys. I'm Kitty. Um, I am also, well, you can find me on YouTube through Kitty on a Leash. I make a few different type of videos, mostly fighting games as I'm trying to learn how to um, fight and do good in those. <laughs> um <laughs> Also, other little tutorials here and there. Um, I am a game programming student going on my last and final year of college. Woo! So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that, and I'm also a huge gamer. I've been a gamer ever since I was a little girl. Um, I sell and make jewelry on Etsy.com. And I'm also a writer for TLG, True Lady Gamers. And um, that's about it. You, I definitely have to just say, Kitty, your video game jewelry is off the I know, hook, I saw okay? it. She has like, <laughs> it is like gorgeous. The Fallout 3, the Nuka Cola caps. I'm really tempted yes. to buy those. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm, broke, so and I'm, ten I'm broke and I'm tempted to like get into my brother's piggy bank and to steal his money to buy it. Like, <laughs> it's like really good. Yeah. I saw your Call of Duty, um, like your Call of Duty game earrings just while you were wearing it in your picture. Oh yeah, yeah they're so <laughs> cool. I thought that was pretty hot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so anyways, um, so we're gaming Valkyries and the point of this obviously is not to put down anybody who plays games casually, who plays games hardcore. We're in the interest of in, in, in empowering, inspiring, and being role models for the girl gaming community because we hope that girl gamers will be a little bit more open, will be more accepting, and can find other girls and like other role models and leaders to be able to turn to for advice, for comments, for questions, as well as discuss very important topics that are currently happening, as well as news and articles and anything they like to talk about because, quite frankly, we are girls, so... <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> so um, one of our major topics for today, obviously, is what does it feel like to be a girl in the girl gaming community? Now, most of us can go online and we can go on YouTube and we can see all the videos that are online and we can probably just, you know, get you know, bits and pieces of it there. Or we can check out Anita Sakarzian, um research project for Kickstarter or among other 16 by 9 or whatever, we can just check a lot of documentaries, but here we'd like to just talk about all personal experiences being in the girl gaming community, whether or not, you know, what is said is true or whether or not it actually is true or what is different from the tracks we're being told. Mm -hmm. Now, Ali Mew, I know that you personally had some experiences, you want to talk about that? <laughs> yeah, um, I would have to say being even on any 
even at being at school, a lot of guys don't even believe that I'm a girl gamer. And, like, actually my current classmates, like, a couple of them are like, oh, yeah, she plays games. Not they, But they kind of ignore me. And that's until they actually find out I have a YouTube channel. They actually play with me. And they're like, holy fuck, this girl knows how to play her game. You know, and whoop their asses. I don't usually do, you know, tell people that, you know, I'm great. I don't want to boast about it because sometimes what if they are better than you? But um, I am used to going to tournaments or even, like, gaming events where guys would, you know, they kind of give me a dirty look when I'm about to play against them. And they apologize because, you know, sometimes there are girls who do tell people that they're really good when they're not really <laughs> good and that puts, like, a bad image on us sometimes. And, you know, like, I, I feel like sometimes guys are just, sometimes they think they can tr troll a lot. And, you know, when you're in the lobby, they'll be like, are you a guy or a girl? And when they find out they're a girl, they try to harass you a lot. I mean, I learned to be more mature about it and just mute them. But, you know, when I was younger, it really offended me. So that's one thing that I think um, we need a lot more girl gamer role models to teach that to other girls. And to be able to freely go like, hey, I'm a girl and I actually game as well because I feel like sometimes I can't really talk to my other girlfriends because they think it's weird I'm playing games half the time instead of, you know, doing other things that are probably just as pointless as playing games sometimes. Yeah, like other other girly <laughs> things, like whatever girly thing you I know, think just do. like window <laughs> shopping, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that's pretty much my experience. I never understood that. <laughs> what about you, Kitty? Well, my experience with um, being a whole girl gamer is, it's been pretty interesting. Like, growing up, I did not have many girlfriends. Mostly had the guy friends, and that's pretty much who I would play with. And ever since, like, I got my Xbox 360, which was, like, maybe three, four years ago, I had no clue that there were so many other girl gamers out there. Like, I seriously had no idea. I thought I was, like, maybe one of the only in the world, <laughs> but no way. <laughs> and, um... I mean, I guess it all kind of took off when I joined PMS clan. I was in a clan before that, but as soon as I joined their clan, it was so awesome being able to play with other girls. And being the only girl and the only one, it kind of sucks a lot of the times. Even I go to school with a ton of other game designers, and the guys still there, they still want to kind of contest me and be like, you know, are you really good? Because I don't know many girls that play this game, so I have to make sure I have to check you out. And it's like you're always fighting to gain this respect. So then you play a couple rounds, beat him, so what? You know, you're good. It doesn't matter. You're a gamer, you're a gamer. But it feels great to play online and meet these other girls that are good and can really kick butt. It's hard, though, because at the same time that the internet benefits us, it, al it actually mm -hmm. also does the opposite. Because in, in, the, in the same regard that we are connecting, we're, we're also putting ourselves out there. We're putting ourselves out there to, to be ridiculed, to be attacked. I mean, like I was saying before, um, you know, Feminist Frequency founder Anita Sakarzian, who's doing a documentary on, you know, misogyny and sexism in the video game industry, she put herself out there and immediately got, like, you know, death threats, and, you know, like, a lot of, like, rape threats. And it's like, you know, and I know you ladies also know the website Fat, Ugly, and Slutty. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> I mean, you guys are obviously, you know, being able to, 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 like, connect with other girls. But do you sometimes find that maybe even other girls or even the guys that, you know, say that they want to you know, be your friend, they actually backfire and turn out to be the opposite? Or they turn out to, to hurt you instead of help you? Um... I think from my experience sometimes that some girls are, um, they could be catty towards each other just because we're girl gamers. I've had that experience before. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's more like, since I usually, I'm very, like, I'm really frank with people. I tell them straightforward. I'm like, listen, I'm not trying to fight. I'm not trying to go over someone's territory. When, when you think it's a good idea that we should be friends instead of, you know, being catty secretly and you know I work things out with her but you know what I'm saying like I, I don't like that kind of thing where girls can't even get along and we're on the same team you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah this happens a lot sometimes online if I'm playing you know whether it's like some type of game like Call of Duty or Street Fighter most of the time I hate to say it but the majority of the time when I run into another female they want to really 
prove something. It's like, oh, well, you know what? You're not even that good with this character. You need to practice. And I don't like to really fight and pick arguments. So I'm just like, well, I don't know what your issue is. You know, we're both playing this game. Obviously, I'm trying to learn. And it's not like you're much better. <laughs> but, you know, it's it feels like every time I end up meeting another girl, sometimes they're usually, like, catty and... They don't really want to just be friends. Like, they want to feel like they're the only girl that's allowed to play this game. And that actually, it hinders as opposed to doing... Any good. Doing, yeah. yeah, any good at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have to understand that like, we're all gamers at the end of the day. Strip away the titles, the gender, the nationality, you know, the preferences, you know, the root of it all, the umbrella is gamers. And, you know, the fact that there's still kind of like this segregation and this hatred, I feel like it's kind of like stupid to say, but I feel like we're being pinned against each other, you know, in order to kind of, you know, be distracted from the ultimate, the ultimate idea behind it, and it's that we're supposed to be united. I mean, the gaming, the gaming community started as a united uh, community where everyone, you know, you know, supported each other. It was a social environment, and I think it doesn't change even now. Even the fact that you know, you know, girls are part of the community of women, even though they have been part of the community for forever, but. <laughs> apparently it's like a new phenomenon it's like no it's not a new phenomenon you know we're not new you know to the, mm -hmm. to the community we've always been there it's just you haven't really bothered to like notice you know <laughs> yeah yeah um but personally and, and, and i say this wholeheartedly because i i admire both of you because i refuse to play any online games unless i know the people i'm playing with and it's just my personal opinion and my i guess my take on the whole mm -hmm. fact that I, I don't want to be, you know, a victim of any harassment or sexism or even, like, you know, hypocritical animosity. Like, I'm not great at a lot of first-person mm -hmm. shoes. Definitely, like, terrible in Halo. Like, for crying out loud, I, I'll crash the ghost instead of flying and shooting at people. Like, it's just, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really, really bad. But that doesn't change the fact that I still try to play. Like, I still make an attempt to learn, to practice, to play. But I won't, I won't play online unless, like, I'm playing with someone that I know or someone who won't judge me. Or I'll mm -hmm. have warned the person, like, you know, a week in advance, I suck at this game. Are you sure you want to play with me? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, but I really wish it wasn't like that. I would yeah. tell you to really, like, I know, even in general, but regardless girl or guy, if you first start playing a new game, especially a first-person shooter... Go in a party by yourself. Don't talk to anybody. Mute everybody. And everyone has to start somewhere because when I first started playing Halo 3, I was... I didn't even know how to, like, walk forward and turn around at the same time. <laughs> and, and this is just being a noob in general. So it takes a lot of practice. So I hope you don't avoid any multiplayer games and just go at it. And the more you play, the more better you get, you know, with anything. So don't let those people put you down. No. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. But I mean, like, I, I, I will still continue to try. Yeah. But there's a lot of mm -hmm. people that are out there that, you know, have refused to even bother touching any multiplayer games because they're afraid of also being a victim. So for all those, like, you know, for all those people that are out there, especially, like, maybe women, who want to play Halo 3, who want to play Call of Duty, who want to play, I don't know, Borderlands 2, but can't play because they're so fearful of the online community, what, what do you have to, like, what could you say to them? I would say, um, from experience, you just gotta be strong, mute everybody, which is what I do. Like, I give people a fair chance in the lobby to see if they're okay to play with and communicate. If they start talking shit, mm -hmm. you just mute them and feel better about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being but serious. I'm, even, even if, like, yep. even if, like, you suck at, like, shooting, like, even if, like, you, um, you jump off the face, like jump off a ledge of the world and like fall to your death, or like you know get like the <laughs> lowest score. Who cares? You know? Where you you know a game is a game, and you know you're not you're not a professional, or even if you're trying to become professional, like I said, everybody has to start somewhere. And you know even me, like when I play against my friend, like actually like today I had an open lobby. I was around like the last four people on the list of eighteen. But the thing is, nobody said anything. Well, obviously because you know they're all my fans. But, um, you know, in the end, there are good people out there. There are good guys, good girls, mm. and it's a game in the end of the day. It's nothing serious. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. It's just, like, the more you play, the better it's just going to be. Yeah. 
I mean, you spend like $60 to buy a game. You should be able to enjoy the online features whenever you want. I know. The big part of the game is the online feature. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you recommend then playing, like, if the if the game has, like, offline features, maybe, like, campaign mm-hmm. to, to try that out first? Yeah, of course. But, you know, in the end, it's never the same as going against live people who are, you know, probably smarter than the <laughs> NCPs. Yeah, definitely prepares you. <laughs> it does prepare you, though. Definitely always play campaign and then go into multiplayer and you will, you know, feel a big difference. Does it matter, like, what um, like what type of online atmosphere you should be in or should you just jump online? Well, I would say having a friend with you is always the best thing. But if you can't, you know, if you don't have a friend with you, like I said, mute everybody else and you'll be in your own comfort. Don't even put on, you know, don't don't have the speaking thing on. Just mute everybody and play, you know, because, like, sometimes even being even just a guy, you, you could just be hated on just because your voice sounds weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've, I've actually heard about that. Like, this guy, I think, or, like, I don't know what it was, but this guy had, like, this list for, like, this speaking problem and, like, mm-hmm. a bunch of people just, like, well, I made fun of him. Wow. And, yeah. yeah. But I mean, like, I feel like just because the immunity that the internet provides for people, mm-hmm. a lot of people will have, you know, the flexibility to be mean. But there are good people out there, and it shouldn't discourage you, and it shouldn't discourage anyone from playing a game. Even me. But I still have to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So speaking about games, and speaking about online games, I know that a massive amount of awesome games just came out this past month. Ooh. And I know both of you have been playing... I know Ali has been playing wholeheartedly in two of them, but... <laughs> <laughs> we know that Halo 4, that Black Ops 2, and Far Cry 3 just came out. Yes, they did. Now, now are you ladies currently playing any of them? I have all three games, actually. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I am only playing two at the moment, only because I'm saving Far Cry 3 to be opened after my finals, <laughs> or else um. I'm going to fail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that, that'll happen. <laughs> yeah. I've got Black Ops 2. I did not get Halo 4. Um, <laughs> I do have Far Cry 3. You know, I, am, I have it, but I haven't really gotten into it because, I mean, I have been extremely busy as well. And I'm, I was, like, kind of saving it for January because that's, like, the month where it's kind of a little dead. dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, after Christmas, after New Year's, no school, month vacation. I think I have, I think we should have a marathon, by the way, yeah, <laughs> when it comes to Far Cry 6. But, um, on that note, what are the games that you guys create? You literally just listed the two freaking games I haven't been playing. Black Ops <laughs> like... 2 and Halo 4. That's all I've been playing. I haven't been playing anything else. <laughs> oh, I've been... How about you? Well, I've been playing Gears of War 3. I know it's kind of old. That game's been out for a while. But I haven't beaten it yet. And it's so what? fun. Like, the storyline is amazing. And I'm just, like, kicking myself. Like, why didn't I not play this earlier? <laughs> so... No, I... I totally agree with you. I mean, Beautiful Judgment is coming up really soon. Oh my god, so it is. <laughs> it, it would, I mean, you're you're already like training for the moment that com- that releases. <laughs> so you're you're good. You're on your way to um, being a pro at that. Yeah. But apparently, it's like going to be a prequel. It's a prequel, yeah. Thing. Ooh. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited for that. I, I want to know. I mean, I'm like I played Beautiful One too, um, but I didn't play three. So mm. How is it? It's awesome. I like 3 a lot. Oh my goodness, it's so fun. Like, there's a mode kind of like, I think it's called Horde, and you're just playing, and there's like all these like random AI characters you get to fight. It's so fun. And you get fun. to build stuff. You get to build, like, fortify your, like, oh, yeah. traps and stuff. You can upgrade them to, like, crazy, like, high tech crap from, like, low tech to high crap. It's crazy. <laughs> I-, I love it how we're, like, we can get stuff and upload it to crap. <laughs> <laughs> That's like my lingo, okay? <laughs> I love it though, I love it. It's like, I was like, I don't know what it's called, it just does shit. I, I know. know, That's all I know, yeah. <laughs> what? 100, like, I mean, 1000 
figures are worth me money, yeah, take that yeah. money. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, man. It's, it's a good Look. game. I'm very horrible at the multiplayer, though, but <laughs> with time, I should get better. I mean, yeah, yeah, as long as you're having fun. Yeah. Besides that, I've been playing Tech and Tag Tournament 2 and Woo. Super Street Fighter AE, which I just now got and upgraded to it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's those are like the three games I'm really playing right now. Um, I think that the games that I'm currently playing are Halo 4. I'm still playing that. Uh, I'm doing the Spartan Ops, actually. Nice. Uh, it's not as easy as people think it is, but it's actually really fun. Like, I beat the campaign and beat the story. I was actually really disappointed in the story. I'm not going to ruin it, but I was really disappointed. Aww. I was expecting so much more in the end boss, but, I mean, whatever. I mean, the story, the story was great. I'm not, I'm not, for all you Halo 4 fans, I'm not diminishing the story. I just expected a little bit more. I did too. No worries. Just because, I like, I, I, like, 343 Industries picked it up from Bungie, and, like, it was like they delivered the same thing, but like even not to the best the ability that Bungie would have if Bungie continued the series. You know what I mean? Like Bungie has its uh, ability to, you know, continue the story, but then add so much more to it. I felt like, you know, I was I was still beating Covenant and then like you know the Prometheans as well, but it, it didn't feel like I was doing like it was Halo Four. I felt like I was playing Halo Three Point Five. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I mean. I can't, I'm glad that there's the Spartan, the Spartan Ops, uh, mode and also the online mode. I'm really happy that they have some episodes. So I'm still playing Halo 4. Um, I'm actually, I picked up Saints Row 3. Nice. And I'm addicted to this game, but you don't <laughs> understand. I wrote a mem about this. <laughs> you know the Dos Equis guy? The guy is like, um, I don't drink beer, but if I ever do, it has to be Dos Equis. Yes, I mm -hmm. remember that. So I made a meme that said, you know, I don't always play Saints Row 3, but if I do, I have to run through, I have to run over every whore, kill every cop, and beat up every person I see. <laughs> and it's just like, that's exactly what happens. Like, I play this game and it's like, I'm listening to this monster, and I'm just like, I'm a bitch and I'm gonna shoot everybody! Oh my like, god, I, I love it so much more creative. than GTA. No offense, GTA and Rockstar, but Saints Row 3, or Saints Row in general, is just so comedic. It's, like, so adorable, even though you're whacking people with this giant purple dildo. And you can <laughs> customize your character, right? And be oh, a badass gangster self. You know, it's, like, your alternate personality. I, I think it's so funny and hilarious. It's, like, a great game to come home to, you know? It, it really is. I feel like every single time, like, I'm pissed off or I'm stressed or, like, I'm bored or I need a break from writing from the other website, I just play that game and... It, it's just like, I get so engulfed in it, and like, they have like all, uh, a ton of other things. We do like assassinations that might like, steal cars. Mm -hmm. And I take pride in tipping out my cars, <laughs> and like, doing stuff. <laughs> and like, if you look at all my cars, they all look sick. Like, they're all white with like, red interior color, and like, gold rims, and like, black tinted windows. Aww. And like, <laughs> I really go all out, and I feel like, this is like, scary <laughs> like sometimes like this is why i'm scared to drive now because i feel like i'm just gonna morph into like this my character we're gonna walk wrong. outside jen and we're gonna fucking go see a car and you're gonna pull out that person punch him and we're gonna take it and drive away <laughs> and drive away and then we're gonna go to the military base and blow it up and then steal one of their choppers and then head straight to Staten island and beat the crap out of the commander uh-oh Oh. <laughs> but yeah, if anybody wants to date Jen, just deliver her her white car, make sure you have black yes. tinted window, and pimp it out and give it to her. I'm pretty sure you'll capture her heart. Yes, and just make sure that the decal is <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> purple pink. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm like really playing Saints Row 3. Like, you, you're, after this podcast, I'm probably going to be playing Saints Row 3. But, um, yeah, I definitely recommend it for anyone who, like, want something different from GTA. It just it mm -hmm. offers so much more. Yeah, um, I don't know. There's something about it where I, I just can laugh. I can play it over and over again, and it's just... I don't know. It's just hilarious. You just laugh at everything. <laughs> Alrighty. So, on to our next topic. <laughs> After all of that. So, what interesting 
game-related thing happened today. Now, I definitely want to talk about the um, Twitter movement. It was the uh, female gamers or female game developers in the gaming industry. There was a Twitter movement that happened not too long ago, and it kind of sparked uh, an onset of tons of, of like quotes, comments, um, fellowship, mentorship, and it's just it was mm-hmm. it was a beautiful moment where for a weekend a lot of people or a lot of women in general um, spoke out about pretty much what they were going through in the video game industry. A lot of women started seeking for other women for help, for advice, in either trying to get into the industry, trying to seek help in building games or you know journalism or video game, you know, you like blog or YouTube, and it was. Like, to me, that was, like, a, a great thing because we needed something like that to happen, mm-hmm. you know, in order to kind of spark a movement. And even now, the movement is still going. Like, we still have Anita Sakarzian still fighting. We have Felicia Day still fighting in the geek community. Um, Aisha Taylor is still fighting in the gaming community as a comedian. And, like, the movement cannot die. Like, we need to continue to have things like this podcast, like Girl Gamer Vogue, like you ladies on YouTube to continue to uh, push that movement so that, you know, like, people can get, like, more people can get inspired, more people can spread the word, mm-hmm. and that this mo- movement actually creates, uh, not, not like a revolution or a rebellion, but definitely changes something in the industry. Um, so that's, you know, something interesting that happened this week that I definitely wanted to talk about, because I know you ladies will be affected by that. I mean, y- both of you are on YouTube constantly. No, I definitely agree. Like, the fact that it exploded on Twitter actually gives people, like, or it reminds people that this issue is still prominent. And because it exploded on Twitter, that people are actually looking at it and be like, oh, this issue is really existing. Or, like, it's it's like they actually admit to it, you know? It's like something that people yeah. don't want to say, right. but now you can't hide it anymore. Mm-hmm. When I first heard about, like, the movement, I saw everything on Twitter... I'm just like, what's going on? What is this? And (laughs) like you said, it is going to affect us. Like me, I am a game programmer. And this is basically like the type of community I'm going to be stepping into. So it's interesting to see that some of these women are having these problems. And it's like, oh my goodness, I have to look forward to this. (laughs) I want (laughs) it to be a change. So I'm glad that people are really tweeting and stuff and... I was able to talk to a few ladies through Twitter, and it led me through a group on LinkedIn, which is Women in Gaming Jobs. Really huge group, just full of game developers, game PR specialists, relations, and just all these other great people I can, you know, network network with, and also just bounce ideas off of. And I'm actually really kind of glad that this is happening, and people are realizing Mm -hmm. what's going on. Yeah, and it'll probably create a better path for you. By the time you graduate, you'll Mm -hmm. probably be able to, you know, have an easier time, you know, getting that job and hopefully not being undermined because I think it was a Jenna Crystal that mentioned that um, even if you're, let's just say a woman, you're working in that industry with some guy that maybe have not worked as long as you and he gets promoted, that's Mm -hmm. really typically not fair, you know? Yeah. Right. No, that's so true, and I mean, I just heard, actually, Kitty, um, for you and for anyone who wants to do game development in the future, there is a a female-only gaming company called Silicon Sisters that just opened up, or just is actually a, a brand new video game company that is, uh, the CEO and the board of directors are all women, <clears throat> or most of them, I believe, um, they are, I believe though they're stationed in Vancouver, Canada, but you know, you never know when it comes to these kind of things. Like, you never know if you'll find someone, you know, through that connection that'll be close to you. I know they're currently hiring, so there's always a possibility there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, like, I feel like this is a turning point for, for us, especially as women who love games, because um, I know that a lot of these women were putting their neck on the line. Like, I know Anita Sikarajin has been asked by many... This I think it was just posted, like, a couple of days ago. A lot of video game companies have asked her to come in and to speak to a lot of the game developers. Hmm. Um, they, did, they didn't release which gaming studios that were, you know, had asked her to come in. But 
she is the same woman who actually had that project for Women's Frequency, and she was asked to come in and to speak to a lot of game developers about how to change um, the image of females in, in games. That's really awesome to hear. No, yeah, that is really good to hear. Yeah, I mean, especially since, like, you know, like, I have nothing against this game. I actually thought it was really hot, but, like, games like Bayonetta. Uh. Do you guys have anything? <laughs> yeah, I know, Bayonetta. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I have nothing against the game. The game was great, but, you know, some people actually didn't like the fact that she was just so... Guys, need help here trying to express this. <laughs> you think that she's, like, overemphasized that she's a female? Or the way she looks? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, that would probably definitely be the way to put it. Like, oh, she's yeah. accentuated her feminine <laughs> Her feminine, bodies. her femininity, yeah. yeah. Some of those moves that she did were kind of like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> it made you cringe at some point. <laughs> I remember having uh, my ex at the time. He had a cousin or whatnot. A, sort of a cousin who was like 12 years old that was playing this game. And you're allowing him to play this? And he's like, yeah, it's totally fun. You should learn about women. And I was like, he's 12 years old. You're not even want to learn about women through a video game? Like, especially one like this? this yeah. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. Um, so, that's something interesting that happened this week. Um, do you leave something to share about something that happened this week? Really? Um, not that I know of. The Walking Dead game won Game of the Year during oh, the yes. I yes, was so did. excited. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, the <laughs> Video Game Awards. I was. I'm. I'm so happy that they won. Mm -hmm. This means that they're not a traditional video game. Yeah. No, they're not. So it's like. It's like. Like now, this opens up to indie developers. It opens up to the idea of what kind of game could be game of the year. Mm -hmm. So it, it they it's broke like, the record because like they went against like the biggest companies that were like right. They have mm -hmm. a lot of games, and here's this little company with Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I definitely think. Um, damn, I forgot the name. Uh, the, the creator of Walking Kirkman. Robert Kirkman. There you go. Robert Kirkman. I know he worked very close with the video game Walking Dead. Yeah. And it's it, it's amazing to see that this guy is like like I wanna be this guy. <laughs> like, you you create a story and then it makes like a like a great T V show and a great video game and a great comic book and you're just like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? Yeah, <laughs> <right? this> <laughs> He's such a cool guy. I met him at Comic Con. Oh yeah. Yeah. You made him cool. <laughs> he was just like so down to earth, and you know I went to the Q and A session, and he's just like cracking jokes everywhere. And I was just like, this guy's <laughs> like probably a multi-millionaire right now, <laughs> and he's just so like a regular person. That's so cool. Final echo, we're I know that's good. Um, who else won? Oh, the guy, there was a guy who won, he was the, music, he won best, like, a Grammy or best music Oh, for score. Journey? Uh, it's yeah. an indie game? Oh my god. Yeah. Like, their soundtrack is really good, but mm. they, he also went against all the other people, like, that were, like, you know, in, in games that were already, like, like, created, like, Assassin's Creed, I think Halo 4, or Call of Duty, I, I forgot which um, soundtracks that were there, already, yeah. but against composers that were, like, that had, like, a huge repertoire. Yeah. He won, like, Best Musical Score, or uh, the Video Game Awards, and then he won a Grammy, also. Like, that's crazy. Like, I know? think that's, like, like, but, like, that's when you know that the gaming industry is just getting bigger and bigger by the year. Mm -hmm. because, like, how can how can a video game composer win a Grammy? Like, that's just, I think that's, like, amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> it's like, what what's going to happen next? Like, you know, the guy that plays Nathan Drake is going to win an Oscar? I don't know. <laughs> you never know with these things, you know? Yeah, that's a great way. You never know. And, and I love that. Like, the intermingling of the industry. It just, it just makes it more unified. Alrighty, so... I just wanted to talk a little bit about games that we're looking forward to. Now that we're at the end of the year, I don't even think there's a lot of games 
to look for in here. Um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but do you lay, are you ladies with this place when you game? There's probably two right now. Um, for me, it's Crisis 3. Hands down. Um, I love Crisis. And the second one is, I think uh, somebody mentioned on my YouTube about that I should play it, which I've seen before, is it's the, the two of us at the end or something, the end of the world. Oh, The Last, Last of, us. of Us. Yeah, The Last of Us, yes. Uh, yes, yes. I definitely need that game. <laughs> definitely looks like a great one. It does. It looks like it's going to be pretty difficult, though. Like, I've seen a lot of the gameplay, and it's like... Everything you do matters at the end. Just like mm-hmm. Heavy Rain. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that game freaked the shit out of me. <laughs> it was a really crazy game. Like, the, the of course, the graphics on the PS3 to the fact that I fucking touch an uh, orange box and that would change my fucking story. <laughs> yeah. I think it's going to be the same thing with The Last of Us. Like, I saw a gameplay and it's like, mm-hmm. depending on whether you go into one room or you go into another... Uh, it, it depends how the enemy attacks you, and it depends like how prepared you are for the enemy. So it's like it really is going to test the skills and limits of the gamer's ability. And yeah. quite frankly, I'm frightened as fuck. <laughs> I'm really scared, but uh, I'm excited at the same time. It's kind of like this anxiety that's ripping ripping me apart, but at the same time, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I guess like the only game for me that's kind of that I will know about that will be coming out next year is Bioshock Infinite. I know the release yeah. date keeps getting like pushed around. Chains. <laughs> yeah. And I'm I desperately need that game. So hopefully it comes out sometime soon. Mm-hmm. I saw um at the PGA's like the trailer for it. Um they introduced well, they probably introduced it for a while but the Handyman. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That guy is like Oh my gosh, I, I I can't even explain it. It's like kind of, like I don't know whoever thinks about these concepts is genius. <laughs> well, that's like, why they're there. <laughs> yeah, seriously, like it was ingenious because not only is it like weird and disturbing, but mm. next thing is like horrifying and like fast and like super strong. Like I can't wait to fight it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, another thing that I actually wanted to mention was. By watching it on the VGX. Did you guys see the trailers for the Phantom Pain? No, I didn't. No. It was this very interesting. I mean, uh, it was pretty much it's like you play this character who happens to get into an accident and you wake up in the hospital and then you find out that every. Like, there's this, like, military men that are just, like, after you trying to kill you, but, like, you, your legs don't work. You don't have a hand, you're bleeding all over, you're wearing, like, the freaking hospital gown on you, and, like, it's you and a bunch of other people in hospital gowns trying to run away from these guys, like, you're being shot up, and then all of a sudden, all this crazy shit just starts happening, like, there's a whale on fire swimming through the skies, eating up helicopters, and you're just like, what the fuck is going on? And I was just like, I want to be in this game, I want to play this game, like, the hell is going on? (laughs) This is amazing. And they didn't show much, but it was just like, I was like, oh my god, it's like, wow. It was like this phoenix in the air, and it's just like, I, I didn't understand any of it. <laughs> all you knew is you want that game. I know, that's all I did. <laughs> they did it and they just... did a good job for the very short seconds that you saw anything <laughs> in that game. And literally, it was like nothing else. It was like black screen, and then fade out, and show, and black screen, and fade out. And then it just showed, it showed enough. Like, take my money. <laughs> Just take my money now. You don't have to have anything. Like, take my brother. <laughs> Use him as a slave to get me food. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. True gamer uh, girl, right there, sacrificing her brother. Like, it's good for the for the better cause. He'll probably do it too. He's like, for a game, fuck that. <laughs> I don't. I can't think of anything new that's happened besides the video game awards. Um. I was pretty happy with Journey winning Best Indie Games. I was very, very happy for them. I mean, they, were, they got so much hate. I felt bad. Wow. And then, like, when they won that, when they won Best Indie Game, mm-hmm. I was hoping she'd just turn around on the mic. I don't know who the woman is, but I... I, but I was hoping she'd turn around on the mic and be like, Fuck you all! Like, <laughs> <laughs> Best Indie Game! That would have been funny. 
Because <laughs> they got so much hate. Like, so many people were just like, oh, it's such a crappy game. You don't do anything. And it's like, it's not a traditional shoot em up yeah, exactly. game. Like, mm-hmm. it's and a little bit. That, it's very artistic to me. Like, very. Okay, maybe it might look simple to people, but making a game is not simple, or else we all would be making a game. My my crazy, I, I would probably have a crazy ass game out right now, but I'm not, you know, <laughs> talented mm-hmm. enough to do all those things. Maybe Crystal in the future, we should talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 Kitty, you should uh, you should definitely keep us on speed dial, or at least in your uh, your gadgets book. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> But when it comes to gaming news, I think the only thing that I really want to talk about is that, you know, the Xbox 360 is having, uh, I know that a lot of websites are giving away, like, Xbox 360 bundles for a very cheap, inexpensive price. You know, like, Amazon.com is giving it away $150 off, so wow. places $100 off. I know Best Buy is doing, like, the uh, Halo 4, um, holiday bundle, um, Nice. I know this is a bit old for some, but some people that are out there, but I know that, um, Microsoft, is offering a free limited edition anniversary Xbox 360 to anybody who has been an, an Xbox Live member for more than nine years, I think since they started. Dang. So, yeah, if, if, if any of you, you know, have been with Xbox Live for that long, you can actually win a free Xbox. Um, I'm not sure, it, I'm not sure what website it is, but I know the CEO or director um, has a Twitter account where he's releasing all the information there, so. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Even though it doesn't apply to me. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't apply to me either. I'm a Sony. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so I know that, um, uh, upcoming is, um, Smashbox, Smash Boombox, uh, upcoming is Smash Boombox. Mash Fest that is happening at the Fashion Free Lounge for anyone who is in New York City who wants to go. It's going to be their final event before the end of the year and it's going to go out with a band. So it's buy two, get one, they buy, buy one, get one free drink. Very $3 to play. They're going to have like Street Fighter versus Tech, uh, Street Fighter versus Tech, Tech, Tech Tournament. Um, Street Fighter, uh, I think the anniversary edition. Um, they had Persona 4 Arena the last time, they had All-Stars, um, PlayStation All-Stars, PlayStation Battle Royale, PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, what? I'm like, I can't talk here. today, it's okay. I know, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there's going to be a lot of great things that are going to be, like a lot of good games to play that night. Um, I know also that, well, I we'll guess we'll talk about it next episode, but I know there's a bunch of events happening in January. Well, we have time for that. Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thanks for everyone for listening to Gaming Library's first episode. Tune in next week to listen to episode two. And if you have any questions, comments, complaints, or, you know, you'd love to be a fan boy or girl, <laughs> by all means, follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. Thanks again for joining us. I'm Nars. Allie. Kitty. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.